Now that we can handle graphing lines, we're going to start looking at graphing an inequality in two variables. So instead of just having one line of solution, infinitely many points that lie on that line, now we're looking at an entire half plane for our solutions. So just to start us off, a graph of an inequality is a drawing that represents its solutions, obviously. Even when we just had lines, any point on that line was a solution to the line. An inequality in one variable can be graphed on the number line. We've seen that before in this class. And an inequality in two variables can be graphed on a coordinate plane, which is what we're going to look at today. Coordinate plane. So, we just want to warm ourselves up and determine whether some points are a solution to an inequality. So again, just making sure we understand the concept of what makes it true, what makes it false. And the first one we want to look at, we want to determine whether this point is a solution of 5x plus 4y less than 13. So when I plug in those values for x and y, does it satisfy the inequality? Does it make it true? So 5 times minus 3 plus 4 times 2, is that really less than 13? So I've got minus 15 plus 8 less than 13. Is it true? Negative 7 is always, well, negative is always less than a positive. So yeah, it's true. That point is one of these solutions to that inequality. Next one we're going to look at just to show a case where it's not true. 6, 8. Is that a solution of this same um, inequality? So let's see. 5 times 6 plus 4 times 8. Is that less than 13? I can already see just from this chunk. It's already larger than 13. So no, it's not. This is... So this point is not going to lie in the solution set of that inequality, but this one will, whether it be um, really close to the line, really far away, somewhere in the plane of these solutions. So take a few for you. Determine whether 4, 3 is a solution of that first inequality, and 2 minus 5 if that is a solution of the second one. So the first one, what we're looking at, 4 for x, 3 for y. Let's plug them in and check. Is that really less than 1? So I've got 12 taken away 6. That's definitely not less than 1. So no, not a solution. And for the second one, again, plugging in. 2 for x minus 5 for y. 4 times 2 plus 7 times minus 5. Is that really greater than or equal to 12? <laughs> so we're looking at 8. Minus 35, that's going to be negative. That's definitely not greater than 12. So, nope, not a solution. And we have to be able to um, compute if a point is going to satisfy an inequality when we're determining which half plane is a part of our solution set. So, we'll look at that next. Before we start graphing an inequality, we first have to talk about the steps. What do I actually have to do before I start hacking away at the coordinate plane? So the first thing we always want to do with our first example, we're going to graph this inequality. We want to graph the boundary line. So where is the graph bound? And in this case, we always just take the inequality, replace it with equality. So we want to graph the line y equals x. So that'll tell us where the boundary is, and how we graph that line depends on um, what inequality we're dealing with. So is it going to be a solid or a dashed line? Meaning, can I include the boundary, or do I have to exclude the boundary? So in this case, we don't have the option to have it exactly equal to, so we would have to have a dashed line, because it can only be greater than. So we have to determine, second, if it's going to be solid or dashed. So solid is if we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. 
dashed is if we have just greater than or less than. So we can't include the boundary. Then after we have that boundary line, we have to determine what half of that plane is a part of the solution set. So we want to pick a test point that's not on the boundary line. Test point not on the boundary. Not on the boundary. On the boundary and see if it makes our inequality true. If it does, you shade that side. If it doesn't, you shade the other. So after that, we just shade the solution set. And let's give it a shot. So we're going to take that line, y greater than x, that inequality. We want to graph the boundary line, y equals to x. So where is our y-intercept? To the origin, 0, 0. And from there, we move according to our slope, up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Or we could go down one, back one, down one, back one. It's also going to fall on that line. Okay. So we drew the line, but now we have to determine, is it solid or is it dashed? So can I include the points exactly on the line? Can y be exactly equal to x? No, it can only be greater than. So we have to make this line dashed. If you figure it out before you draw it, then it's a little easier. But the concept is still the same. So the dashes mean we're not allowed to plug in points that lie exactly on that line. So now we have to determine what side of the plane are we shading in. Are points on the upper half going to satisfy this inequality? Or are points on the lower half going to satisfy the inequality? <coughs> so we can choose a test point anywhere we want. It just can't be on that line because that's going to be the equality case, it's not going to be satisfied. So, let's choose a point. I'm going to pick in the upper half plane, minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, some random point up here. I want to see if 2, minus 2, 4 is going to satisfy this inequality. So, the test. Test point, minus 2, 4. Let's plug it in. So x is minus 2. Is minus 2 less than 4? Yes, that's true. So any point over in this half of the plane is going to satisfy that inequality. So we need to shade anything in the upper half plane. Okay, you could choose another point if you weren't convinced or you think you made a mistake. Pick a point maybe on the axis. I'm going to choose over here. 1, 2, 3, minus 4, 0. When I plug in those values into my inequality, is it still true? So now I have y is 0, 0 is greater than minus 4. True. Okay, even if you chose a test point, in the lower half plane, it would still give you the same information. So I do want to show you that. I'm going to choose the point um, 1, 2, we'll go 2, 0. Easy numbers to plug in. So when I test 2, 0, does it satisfy my inequality? So x was 2, is 0 greater than 2? It's not. It's not true. So that point is not in my solution set. So I'm not shading anything over here. If you chose that test point and it came out to be false like it did, that would tell you shade the upper half plane all of those points um, are solutions. All right, so on the bottom half of that page, I want you to graph the inequality. Same boundary line, but different direction. Now I want y less than x. So again, graphing the boundary line is going to look exactly the same. We need a dashed line going through the origin, through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Tells me I can't plug in points on the boundary line because it won't make it true. But we need to determine upper half or lower half plane. 
kind of gives it away when we've done the other example, but again, just to hone in on the fact that we can choose test points that'll tell us which side, which half plane to shade. So I'm going to choose 1, 2, minus 1. 2, minus 1. If I plug that in, so my y value is minus 1, is minus 1 less than 2. Yeah, so I should be shading anything that includes any side, any of those points that includes where we've had that successful test point. Okay, you've also could have chosen something in the upper half plane, like minus 3, 1. And when we plug that in, it should come out to be false, because that's not a part of our solution set. So let's see, why is 1? Is 1 less than minus 3? No, it's not. 